Consistent use. Consistent use refers to the requirement that both the land and the improvements to the land be valued for the same use within a given appraisal. An extreme example that goes contrary to this would be an appraisal that values the land for a specific piece of property as residential and the structure on that land is commercial. Contribution. Perhaps you've seen one of those reality TV shows that illustrate the rough and tumble world of real estate flipping. The story usually begins with the purchase of a property that the investor intends to flip for profit. Sometimes the outcome turns in favor of the investor and he or she is able to exceed anticipated profits. However, the stories show investors who lose more than just their initial investment. One classic mistake these investors make is to misunderstand the principle of contribution. The principle of contribution states that the value of the component of a property depends on its added value to the whole investment. One classic mistake these investors make is to misunderstand the principles of contribution. That is, they do not understand that the value contributed by a component to the total value can be less than the cost of the component. For example, replacing household fixtures with the top of the line amenities in a lower quality residence within a lower quality neighborhood will most likely not add as much value to the property as the fixtures originally cost. This example also illustrates decreasing returns. Substitution. In most instances, a property's value is based on the value of an equally desirable substitute property. Buyers will not pay more for a property than they would pay to acquire an equivalent property offering the same value. Using this principle, appraisers also realize that it is the substitute property with the lowest price that attracts the greatest interest from buyers. Supply and Demand. This variable refers to the amount of the property that is available for sale at specific prices during specific periods. Surplus Productivity. This is the net income after the costs of labor, capital, and management have been paid. Highest and best use. This is defined as the most profitable single use a given property can provide, whether vacant land or improved property. It may also be a use that will most likely be desired in the future. With this factor in mind, this evaluation is the essential part of the appraisal process. The assumption is that people wish to receive the maximum benefit of either the land or the improved property, whichever produces the greatest overall investment return. Highest and best use also provides a discussion of utility. And this is important because it is the basis for the value. If something does not have utility, it cannot be valued. In determining a property's highest and best use, an appraiser will assess four fundamental factors. Financial feasibility, legally allowable, maximal productive, physical possibility. Financially feasible. Financial feasibility means that the highest and best use must provide a positive net return proposed use must generate adequate revenue to justify the cost of development. It should also provide a profit for the developer. Improved property with remaining economic life most likely creates no concern. However, if the improved property has limited remaining economic life, it may no longer be financially feasible to maintain its current use. If, for instance, the value of the vacant land in question does not exceed the value of the land with improved property, development of the property becomes its maximal productive use. An example would be an agricultural land that is being used as a pasture for livestock animals. In this example, because the land is located directly in the path of development, its highest and best use might be as a golf course or as a subdivision. Note. The highest and best use of property is not determined by the property owner, developer, real estate broker, or appraiser, but rather it is a use shaped by the competitive forces within the market where the property is located. Legally allowable. Only those uses that are or may be in accordance with regulation 
have potential highest and best uses. This may exclude uses that are not unlikely to become allowable by zoning, forbidden by government regulations, prohibited by deed restrictions or covenants. Legal violations of zoning ordinances can occur when the buildings or use of the property violate the zoning that existed before the zoning ordinance was passed. When these situations occur, non-conforming uses are often grandfathered. This means that new zoning regulations cannot remove structures that already existed. For example, if a district is zoned residential, the corner gas station becomes a non-conforming use location within the district. The gas station owner has the right to remain even though it is not an approved use in the zoning district. Typically, the grandfather's status remains for as long as the property does not change, but problems will likely arise if the stipulation is not honored. For instance, if the owner of the corner gas station makes significant modifications to his business by acquiring equipment that changes the types of service that the gas station provides its customers, say he adds a part, parts department to the gas station, the business is now subject to removal because the basis for non-conforming use has been changed. If, however, the gas station simply updates its existing equipment to ensure that it can improve its existing services, it would not result in an illegal change and the business would continue to have the right to function within the zone district. If a non-conforming use structure is destroyed or partially destroyed up to 50% or greater as a result of vandalism or any other occurrence, zoning ordinances may restrict restoration. In this event, non-conforming property owners may not have the legal right to rebuild. When a business stops operating at the non-conforming use site, zoning ordinances generally classify this as a discontinuance that can revoke the business's legal non-conforming use status. It is important to note that this is only the case when the property owner controls the reason for discontinuing operation. In those instances, when situations outside of the owner's control force a halt in operation, the business will be allowed to operate again after the barrier has been removed. Maximal Productive The subject property use must generate the highest net return or profit for the developer. A property that could hypothetically be developed with residential, commercial, or industrial development might only have one of those uses as its highest and best use. Physical possibility. Any potential use must be physically possible given the size, shape, topography, and other characteristics of the site. By the very nature of existence, every property has physical characteristics that establish its highest and best use. For instance, Properties may have value-enhancing views and frontages that lend themselves more to high-end residential uses. Properties limited by poor access may serve best as agricultural locations. S steep topography or unstable soil may limit development at all. Despite exceptional drainage, level compact soil, and freeway access, the site is still in the middle of nowhere. Determining physical possibility means balancing the positive and the negative attributes. For example, an outcrop on an extended rocky edge may have geologic problems which require special foundation work, but the value of the ocean views may make such improvements worth the expense. Now go back to the beginning of this lesson section and complete the fill in the blanks. Again, once you've filled in the blanks, you go to the quiz or exam and you can continue on to the next session. Thank you and good luck.